This your boy Zach Shirley. Christopher Walker. Quentin Coleman. Adrian Neal Jr. Hey y'all, it's your boy Harold. The Blackberry View is here. So do what you gotta do. Get ready, pop your popcorn. Sit back, relax. Join us. For the journey that is Blackberry View. Watch the Blackberry View. Hey everyone, and welcome to your first episode of the Blackberry View. My name is Adrian Neal Jr. I'm the creator, executive producer, and one of your co-hosts for the Blackberry View, and I am so thrilled for you to be joining us for this first episode. For those who do not know, the Blackberry View was created to give voices to black queer men from all over, from different journeys and different backgrounds. And we can only hope that this show will be able to give you what you need, what you want, and what is healing for your soul. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Quentin, and uh, just happy to be here to share some good information and, and kiki with you guys, so stay tuned. Hey, how you doing? It's your boy Chris. So excited, sit back, relax, grab a snack, because I guarantee you're gonna enjoy this show. What's up everybody? It's your boy Zach. I'm so happy to be here with you all. I serve as one of the other co-hosts for the Blackberry View. We're here to bring you so many relevant, exciting, and just fun topics. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Harold. Thanks for taking time out to be here with us today. And without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and jump right on into it. So y'all, let's go to our daily squeeze. So earlier this week, we saw that Democrats Chuck uh, Schumer and uh, Elizabeth um, Warren reintroduced a resolution um, to call for Biden to use executive action in order to cancel fifty thousand dollars worth of student loans. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. So they put a lot of pressure on him, right? Um, this was originally uh, introduced uh, last year by Adam Presley and some other Democrats, but it got me thinking, particularly in the context of relationships. Does your partner's debt in any way affect how you and y'all's relationship kind of go? Ooh, money, uh, money, money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say for me, I don't necessarily mind. I've always been in relationships where I was the primary breadwinner, um, and I've been with guys who have <laughs> not. <laughs> and so um, I get you as that. Yeah, I get you as that. They be. Um, and and thinking back to the relationship that my parents had, my mom was always the primary breadwinner, and it never really made a difference for them. So I think for me, that was an example that I had to be able to say I could be with a partner who not, not necessarily made as much as I did and they had their own debt. Um, but as long as they were responsible with handling their debt, I would have been fine. Yeah, I that, think in this, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was gonna say, I think everybody nowadays have debt, right? Whether it yes. is right. student loans, whether it's mistakes you made as a younger person. Um, mm -hmm. Like, so as it relates to relationships, much to your point, as long as this person is responsible enough and making moves to take care of the debt, right? So are they saving money? Am I having to pay right. for everything? Right. Right. Am I having to pay for your debt in mine? Because I may make a nice salary, but I ain't rich, honey. I ain't got all that money. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm going to be devil's advocate, I, and I can foresee me always being devil's advocate. <laughs> um, when you come with me, when you come to me, you come with me, come with me with, with a bag. <laughs> if you have no bag, stay where you in. Okay, but so no. what, if, what if the person coming to you with, with a, a bag person, or with, with a bag like or with debt? So like a doctor or a lawyer? Yeah, because that usually is. I have a lot of debt. Right. <laughs> Because baby, his head was like, I can't compute. I can't compute. <laughs> because they do incur a lot. No, so, right. so I think so. I, so one, y'all never been in a, in a real relationship. But I do think like when you love someone, you accept them flaws and all. And so when you fall in love, like you can't let someone's financial status. Like sometimes when you fall in love, you just fall in love, right? And what someone has and don't have financially, a lot of times it can't come to play because when you love somebody, you love them and you can't help that you can't get over that. Um, but as for me, as I continue to grow and look towards a relationship, so as I'm looking at your partners, I'm looking at all of it. I'm looking at credit. I'm looking at how you save. I'm looking at your spending habits because I know myself, right? Because I know I like to spend money. So I need somebody who's good with money because I'm not good with money. <laughs> and that's why I said this. Come on, partnership so, and so, right, right. So, so I can't be bad with money and you be bad with money too because we're going nowhere, right? So if I'm bad with money, you need to be good so you can help Excel me and I can help excel you in other areas. I can help you spend your money. So you bring a great point. I think that money plays <laughs> such an important role in relationships yes. and the ways yes. in which people like plan their life around that people are afraid to talk about money and that is like 
first problem numero uno because Absolutely. we can't yes. talk about money and we can't sit down, come to the table and talk about our collective finances. That's a problem for me. What you said is that a lot of people, I guess even in general, like a lot of people talk for them to talk about money. And I think, like, culturally, as being black people, that's something that a lot of us yeah, weren't taught growing about, up. Yeah. Right? So, like, like growing up, my parents never told me that I had to work to pay bills. And they never told me, okay, you need to budget this amount mm-hmm. monthly to say, to, you know, make sure your shit is above water. The flow, right? Yeah. right? I had to figure some shit out on my own. I had to come home to my apartment and my life to be shut off for me to be like, bitch, okay, get your shit together. <laughs> right? Yeah. right? So, because yeah. I think that, like, a lot of us, we were never taught Right. About financial literacy, we, we were never taught the importance of it. Um, so as we tend to grow older and develop relationships with people, it's hard to have those conversations because it's something that's not known to us. It's something that's not familiar for us, right? And it can be sometimes hard because we don't know where to start. And then when well, you meet people and he seems to have it all together and then you're the person who might not have it all together, there's that reluctance or that fear to be open and honest about your financial status because you're a great guy. You look good, you smell good, but you're up here and I'm down here and I'm not there yet. But I still, I'm afraid to let you in because I don't want you to discount me because I don't have it all together just And yet. you know what that yeah. speaks to? That speaks to shame. And so currently, I am in the midst of getting to know someone and mates more than I do, right? And so now I'm the one feeling like, oh my good enough for this person like they, they have degrees out the woodwork, they, they have books out and all this. And I'm sitting here like, Oh, it's, God, it's my little job. And so, and so let's tag into that. I have been in a number of relationships where guys look at my accolades. They look at my accomplishments. They look at my degrees. They look at all of these things. And they're like, I'm not good enough for you. And in my mind, all I want is you. Like, mm, right. I, you know, they, they, look at, they look at Dr. Shirley, and I want them to see Zach. Mm. I don't want them to see that. I leave Dr. Shirley at the office. Right. And so I think that the same allure that they have towards that when they meet me is ultimately their downfall because of the fact that it brings out some hesitations and some mm-hmm. esteem issues. And so I think when we talk about money, you know, there's that other aspect of saying, oh, well, this person makes this much money. And like, I can't do these things or I'm not mm-hmm. financially sound to do these things. However, it th- there needs to be some conversation similar to what Harold was talking about, about you know, with, with financial literacy, what does good enough look like? Mm. And, and is it tied to my accomplishments? If you ask that question, you get, you're going to get one or two answers and you need them both. Either they care about that and that's not the person for you, or they don't care about it and now you can be put at ease. Mm. Mm. Very true. Well, I, I, hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was that again? Well, I was going to say, my background is kind of different because I... Well, my mom is very, she's a business business owner. So, like, she always, like, was harped on me about, like, save money, budget, blah, blah, blah. And so, growing up, I was like, I don't want to learn this shit. But <laughs> after a while, you know, it kind of, like, sunk in. So, like, now she and I, for years, we've always, like, had open and honest conversations about, like, you know, managing money and whatever. So, that's kind of like whenever I go into a relationship, I don't ask someone, like, How's your budget and whatever, but I'm always like, that's always something that I'm going to make myself, uh, I guess, aware of. Yeah. Or kind right. of like, just listen for like, how you talking about like, yeah, you have this <laughs> nice car and you have these nice clothes, but like, what do you do? What else do you do with your money? Like, how do you manage your money or whatever? And it's not like I have to like ask, right. interview like questions sure. to get those answers. Sure. I just see how you move. Yeah. So, um, but then also to your point, like when you're meeting someone and then you feel like, ooh, you're making more money. For me, that's like, shit. Like, no, so it, it's definitely a turn on. Yeah. And I'm not, so I don't think it's necessarily the <laughs> money piece. It's more so, the accolades, right, yeah. like what, what they've been able to achieve. Like, exactly. Yeah. Especially yeah. if they're younger than me. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> now, I can't. Now, when you put age in it, then that. Because okay, so, 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 it's been like, so, okay, so, that, so that's something that I deal with just because of like, I am young and I do view myself as being very accomplished just about what I've been able to achieve. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times when I talk to people, especially if they're older, older than me, 
they get very intimidated by who I am and by what I've done. So you have to be open enough to have these conversations with your partner to say, hey, what you got going on? What are you bringing to the table? What are you struggling with? And you collectively figure out what's going to work best for you all, right? So understanding that, hey, you might not be the best saver or hey, you might not be the best budgeter, but I'm going to work with you to develop a plan so we can enhance and grow together, right? Yes. Being in a relationship is not about singular growth, it's about collective growth because we're on a journey together. Yeah, come on, and if we're not willing to journey and try new things together, we don't need to be together. Period. You better well, preach. On that note, I want to make sure Biden grows my pockets <laughs> by canceling my fifty thousand dollars over student loans. Come on, Biden. Break Come on, Biden. Biden. Come on, Biden. 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 This ain't to Biden. Yeah. Commonal. Like, <laughs> see, <it's right. laughs> and so we actually want to know what you are thinking. So if you have anything to offer this to this conversation, please follow at the Blackberry View on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and let us know what you feel about this topic. On to the next. Who do we have? So. What's the juice? Uh oh. Oh, yes. So, speaking well, of. My juice. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we say what's the juice, that means what's the main topic for today? This is kind of something that we've uh, decided b before the actual show, obviously. So, uh, <laughs> so once we discuss, then we want to hear back from you and let us, uh, let us know what you think about this topic and give us the juicy juice. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, today's topic was, uh, speaking of relationships, monogamous relationships Ooh. versus polygamous Ooh. relationships. <laughs> so, open relationships or no? Uh, so I did a little poll a few weeks ago. <laughs> Come on, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Paul. I did a little poll, yeah. Uh, and I asked about, it was about 125 people I did on social media on Instagram. And so I asked those folks which would they prefer? Do they align with monogamy or open relationships? And uh, I had I had 84% of those 125 were aligned with monogamous relationships. And then there was 16% that was like open relationships. So seen. guys, what do y'all? <laughs> the eyes are in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> so what do y'all think? Do you, I mean, how do you guys align with uh, with these two? Well, as a lady of the cloth, that cloth is lace. Oh, <laughs> 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 um, so. As you all have probably been hearing with Harold and I, yes. monogamy. It, that's it. That's like that's it. I, um, I, I thought about this for myself um, as someone who recently turned 40 and, and I'm looking Happy at Happy birthday, it. by the way. Happy birthday to you. And we're back. So I look at monogamy and relationships very seriously. Um, I take my friendships very seriously. And so I look at a romantic partner and I am okay saying to myself, I can wake up with this person every day for the rest of my life. And you know, don't get me wrong. One person does not fulfill everything that an individual needs. So you have friends, you have colleagues, you have coworkers, you have outside projects, you've got the Blackberry View to keep you entertained. And so <laughs> one person cannot be the end all be all. However, I'm okay with that person being as much of what I need as they can be and wanting to be that for that person as well. So it's all about, it's the mono, it's a monogamy for me. <laughs> I also know for me, I, I struggle in anything, like with multiple things going on at any time. Even when I'm trying to talk to people, like I struggle if I'm talking like three or four different people, because I, I don't save numbers, there's a process. Like, I'm gonna say, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say, so, so we're gonna put, we're gonna put a pen in there and come back on another episode by saving numbers. But I struggle to just keep a, a committed and engaged like energy mm -hmm. with all three or four people. So even in that, I'm a, I I have to practice exclusively dating and talking to a person, which I know I'm weird because some people are like you're not dating nobody. You could talk to whomever. Yes, and. For me, it's just better to like be focused on one person, and that's not just in the beginning stage, just in like beginning, middle, and end. Right. So, like again, to your point, no one person can fulfill all your needs, but like I would rather work on fulfilling the needs of one other person than trying to work and fulfill the needs of multiple other people because I'm terrible at that, and then and then I'm gonna have my own insecurity because I'm like, damn, I can't be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what you have to say. Um, so I am monogamous, 
but I do believe in, uh, I'm polyamorous, right? So not, not necessarily believing in like poly polygamy. Like I don't see me having multiple relationships, but I do believe that I would allow other people in to the my bedroom. bedroom. Into the relationship or bedroom? Into the bedroom. So what's the difference between polygamy and polyamorous? polyamorous. So polygamy, polygamy comes from a relationship standpoint. So like I may have multiple wives, or I may have multiple husbands, but polyamory is just a sexual thing. Right. So it's allowing people to come into your bedroom sexually. So I do want a monogamous relationship, but I do want my mon monogamous relationship to be polyamorous because I enjoy having group six. I like group six. I like having multiple hands touch me and touching multiple bodies, right? Yes, body, um, body. Come on, now, 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 question though, <laughs> would you, do you mind if your partner goes out by himself? No. And do, or you want to do it together? <laughs> together. <laughs> It was, a, it, was a, it was a no. It was a no. It was a look at the camera and be like, no. no. It was a look, it was a look out and then no. Right. No. And, and, so, and so I say that because it's hard for you. You can't be one person's everything all the time. So with me being aware of that, I know I can I I can be your everything emotionally, right? But I don't I don't necessarily have to be your everything sexually because you might like different things. I might like I may be a top, and you may, the dude that I be with may be a top too. So we both tops. We gonna have to fuck somebody, but emotionally we're together. But sexually we gonna have to get our rocks up with somebody else, right? <laughs> and sometimes you just want to try stuff up. You sometimes you want to. Spice it up a little bit. So that I'm all about it. Spice it up. 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 So that's gonna be the name of this episode. Spice it up. So granted, granted, I am monogamous, but I do believe in polyamory. So to those of you out there who are attempting or want to shoot your shot, just know that if you want to deal with me, we deal with me and me only. But once we get together, we can invite somebody else in. But you better guarantee we both gonna be there. And if you would get Outside of me, <laughs> here we go. I am all about what is going to work for the relationship, right? Okay. And so I have been in relationships and I have dated people who definitely much were, um, who may have put off that they wanted to be monogamous, but deep down they actually weren't and weren't ready to accept that truth, which led to cheating, right? Mm. Um, and so for me, you know, if it's going to benefit the relationship for us to invite somebody into the bedroom, um, as long as I know that I have your heart, your, your mind, your spirit and all that, then, then I can do that. Um, and, and some people are like, I mean, but you have to have a preference and I'll be perfectly honest, like I, I, I really don't, not in that arena. Yeah. Because even though sex is important, it does not, um, it's not as important as other things. Like sure. one, I want to make sure, can I be vulnerable with you, mm -hmm. right? Can yeah. I cry in front of you? Can, can, do I have your respect? Like I say this all the time, I'd rather somebody respect me than love me because love is fleeting. One day you may, you may be like, I do not love this nigga. Mm -hmm. But do you respect me? Because that suggests that you will do, th that you won't do certain things, right? right. That right. hurt me, right? right. Um, so for me, uh, as it relates to monogamy and, and, and polygamy, I can I can do both. Like I definitely can. I would love to just be with one person for the rest of my life. Would you be open to a person switching up? What do you mean switching up? So like say you're in a relationship, you start a relationship and let's say let's give some time to it. So it's been three years. And then what did Y'all been three years, either monogamous or three years, um, in this open relationship. But then all of a sudden, like, you know what, Adrian, I want to be monogamous with you only. I just want to be with you and have it between me, you and I. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with them switching it up after there's already been time invested on a whole nother? I would be because, you know, people are ever changing. We are ever growing. Mm -hmm. And so to think that somebody is going to be the same for the rest of their lives is naive to me. Like, I actually want somebody who's going to grow, right? Whatever that looks like for them, just like I'm going to grow. Right. right. And so if they come to me and they're like, hey, you know, I'm going to have a conversation and, 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 and let's talk like I'm, I'm, I'm having some needs. Like I've been watching Pornhub lately and I and I and I get turned on by seeing people piss on people. Mm -hmm. Is that something you want to do? I will donkey kick the shit out of you. <laughs> now, knowing me. I go ahead and try it first, <laughs> and if I don't like it, 
then let, let, let's work within the confines yeah, of our relationship to figure out how we can meet that need. <laughs> right. Like, if, if you identified that being something very important to you, then let's see within the confines of, of our relationship how we can do that. Right. right. And side note, for the people out there, if you like to get peed on, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're not judging it is you. Young, it's we're young. Not, we're not yucking y'all young. We're not, we're not. But not. it's not my preference, but it can be yours. Because what you, you, know, what you don't eat, don't make that shit. Right. Come on. Right. And we all, one thing we have in common, y'all, all of us right here, is we are all some freaks. Okay, with me, I'm selfish. I, you, mine, and you, nobody else's. However, I, I'm kind of like Chris. Now, if my partner was like, hey, we, I want to play with like multiple people in the bed, I will give that serious thought. I mean, no, let's face Seriously. it. I'd be like, no, yeah, okay, yeah, we can. That needs to be communicated yes. and that needs to be cleared and ironed out before we even make one first move because I don't want you to slide in a DM and be like, oh, I just like that that last session we had. And then what about we, uh, you, and I do something that, no, no, I still. And see, here's the thing. I, I'm real oftentimes put together and really clean and pristine, but you will cut a bitch. That's the problem. That's the problem for me. You, you open Pandora's box, people want to slide in your DM. But that's but that's where the communication piece, that's where the understanding and respect is. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because, because well, me and my that, partner, we need to already, like, I know, we know how people are outside of, like, our relationship, and we know people going to try to come for us or whatever. Yes. So we need to be on one accord before we actually go do this, because now I'm holding you accountable, and you already know what it is. So if you going out parade, then that's crossing the boundary. So there's right. consequences. Also, when you do live a lifestyle like that, a polyamorous lifestyle, mm-hmm. you have to vet the people that you choose to come into your yeah, that's yeah. Yes. I was always vetted. And because I was vetted, I knew what it was given before I had even got there, right? Yeah. Yes. And also learning how to, when, you, when, you, when you're engaged in those types of activities, learning how to disassociate sex from love and emotion. But honestly, like learning how to, people need to learn how to disassociate sex from emotion, from love, and That's everybody, key. everybody can't do that. Wow. And if you can't do that, yeah. maybe do being Don't in a polyamorous that. relationship is not for you. No. But someone like me is that I can fuck you down. And I even like you. I just was and I, you the don't time. have no ties. You, you don't, don't have, have no ties, kind of time. right? And and those are the type of people. If you choose their lifestyle, that you need to let into your relationship. The, the, those freaks who can get fucked and fuck without it being complicated, without it being right. yeah. all this extra shit. You no. know what I'm saying? Uh, but if you're doing it with somebody who's looking for a relationship but they want something more, or even somebody who has an issue with you because they'll try to get with your man to be vindictive. Oh, not that too. To be, v- to, to be vindictive. We got to pull up. Right. <laughs> Period. Me and my own girls. We outside. Right. What's up? <laughs> no better, no chase. We at your house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it goes back to what everybody's been saying. It's about having that communication because yes. communication is key. So making sure you and your partner are both aware of what you're doing and also making sure that you're vetting the people that you're doing it with and having a conversation like, babe, I want to do this to please you, please me. And outside of us, we're not going to deal with them. And granted, I do have friends that invite me in to their stuff mm-hmm. and we're still yeah. cool. Yeah. But, but I know, know my what boundaries. It is, you go, yeah. right. I know what it is. Yeah, I know my boundaries, right? right? Because I'm I'm a respectful ass bitch. And that's all period. <laughs> so I know my boundaries. Yeah, I know yeah, no, I'll throw it in there somewhere. As long as boundaries, consent, <laughs> and respect. Because consent matters. Consent matter. does matter. matter. Yeah. Well, no I'm such big thing. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. Right, but sometimes well never mind. <laughs> what you gonna say, friend? Because it does matter, but sometimes when you don't give it, it's hot too. So now it's time for us to move on to the next segment. Yes. So here at the Black Bear Review, we have something that we like to call WTF moments. What are those feelings? The duration of our show, we're going to discuss our feelings towards topics, towards situations that we've experienced in life, or towards whatever the fuck we want to talk about with this WTF moments. How do relationships make you feel? How, how does the lack of not being in a relationship feel? As it relates to relationships, all you all know, Right, and anybody who's close to me know that I love being in a relationship. There are times when I will admit that I get down when I'm not in one, um, and I had to do my own internal work, right, of working through why do I get down 
by not being in a relationship. And I think that's something that not enough of us talk about, right? We are, we, we are so okay with being surface level and we're so okay with, oh, well, you know, I just need my friends and you know what, I don't need no relationship, I don't need no nigga, blase, blase, blase. Um, and that's fine, but where is that rooted from, right? Are you trying to cover up the fact that, you know, you do want somebody at night to hold you? I mean, I'm, I'm about to be 35 this year. And, and, and yes, I do not want to spend the rest of my life alone. I want to build a legacy with someone. I want to have kids with someone. I want to, you know, continue to grow and develop with someone. I want us to be sitting on the porch in our rocking chairs as we're rocking, like Cicely Tyson was on that Tyler Perry movie. We God, had all the so kids. Old. Oh, Cicely. Cicely. Yeah, too Can we get two seconds? Okay. So I want to be doing all of that with the man that God has built for me right that god has ordained for me to be with and so there are times that i'm just like man so is is it me like am, 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 am i ugly like am i not bringing something to the table yeah. is my pussy not popping severely yeah. um like what is happening um you know i do my kegels you know I cook, I like, clean, no. I feel like I look good. You show them how to hit that ring. <laughs> <laughs> I cook, I clean, and let me tell you how I don't have this one. No, but, but honestly, like, so for me, relationships are very important, but it's the right relationship. Mm. And yeah. that, and, and that's what my journey has taught me, right? Yeah. It is being with the right person and that right person that truly brings a certain level of not happiness, but joy, because joy is unmoving. Right? Happiness is very movable and fleeting. Joy wow. is something that stays, wow. right? When that person is pissing you off, oh. <clears throat> there is still joy that you are in this relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And so th th those are my feelings as it relates to relationships. Okay. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> my longing or desire for a relationship, it comes and goes. And so, like, now I'm in this period where I don't want to be with anybody. The first thing that I think of when I think of relationship, I just think stress. It's just like, I have this stressful, I always have to like consider somebody else's feelings, then I have to tell you where I'm going, then I have to wonder where you at. I'm like, I don't want to deal with all that. I just want to go and do my thing. I don't want to consider you. I don't want to ask you how your day was. I don't want to ask you how you feeling. I like to like have nice conversations and what have you, but like that, just the chore of really diving into a relationship. Because it takes a lot of work, right? And it so, does. It does. I'm just in a period right now, I'm not saying that it's going to always be like this, guys. But it's right now, I just don't want to. Because before last year, I get eyes. Woo! I, mean, I know. Listen. You know, tell, listen. We're not talking about listen. that journey. Listen. We're not talking about so, that journey. So, like, I had one of those rare occasions. <laughs> Where I was like, you know, I'm gonna open up to this person. And I'm gonna really like dive in, and it was nice at first, and it felt great. But then the the further, you know, I got in this little this little. The spring and summer came. Yeah, and then the it was like changed. everything just shaped. So and then it just screwed me up in the head. Then you know, COVID happened, and I'm just like, oh my god. So, uh, <laughs> so. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's another <laughs> another one. Yeah. <laughs> So like so for me right now mm, I don't like but I do I do like Adrian said I think relationships are great and I and I think you know really good ones that um, when both parties are ready it's a magical thing but yeah. me right now mm. so for those who want to shoot their shot at Q you wait can't. about six months <laughs> <laughs> four six nine <laughs> <laughs> for me I I'm a lot like Adrian I'm very relationship oriented. I want to be in a relationship. I long for a relationship. Like I said, I'm 40. Like, and like Drake said, I forgot what song it was. Who the fuck wants to be 70 and alone? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it is when you know that not only you bring stuff to the table, you bought the whole house. Ooh. Hey. Then that means that you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, you know, what, let, let me, I'm gonna take that back. What you about? Q, I, you? I already called this. Wait, no, but you had to be a boundary. Don't make me catch right. you from this guy. I said, I was there behind it. <laughs> <Wait a> right. <laughs> uh, you know, when you are, you're educated, you're well spoken. You're respectful, because I agree, respect 
It's days when I'm not going to like you. It's days where I may not feel like I love you and vice versa, but I'm going to always respect you. Right. Um, and so when you're able to bring all of these things to the table and it's still like, damn, like I keep missing this mark. Like, what is it that I'm missing? What's wrong with me? Mm-hmm. And so figuring out, you know, as well adjusted as, as I feel like I am becoming, and I'm not going to say that I am because we're all still trying to adjust ourselves to yeah, well right, adjust. Right, right, right. Um, I'm like, all right, you know, I have all these things to offer and bring, but what's like, like what's not happening? And so, but for me, a relationship is very, uh, it is extremely important. You know, I have the career, I have the accolades, yeah. I've made a name for myself. It's like this final piece because what good is all of that if you don't have someone to share? You know, and friends are great. Like, friends yes. are amazing. Yes. I, I ain't sleeping with my friends. And it's not even about the sleeping with part. Like, the vulnerability, the, yep. the, the, the pure joy of just being with someone who connects with you. You know, because when we're talking about like seasons, you got to see a person through all four seasons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. And that way, you know that, all right, this must be the spring, Chris. Mm-hmm. Well, the fall, Chris, gonna get this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you, and, and, and they need to see you through all four fight seasons. Fall, spring, and summer, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and so, seeing somebody through that and them seeing you through that, because you also have to let people see you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't watch me, see me. Oh, mm. I like that. Don't, don't, don't That's hear me. Thing. Listen to me. Mm. Like you yeah, have to get to these deeper, the, the, these deeper levels with people, and, uh, and a lot of people, like you were talking about earlier, Adrian, with you know, you know, be having an open relationship versus being monogamous, they're not ready to have that conversation. No, mm-hmm. no because not. they have. I, I have. I said this yesterday. <clears throat> you know, I said I've been with a man who was damaged, and he turned around and he damaged me. Mm. And so there's healing that needs to come from that. And yeah. Relationships are hard, to Q's point. They're, they are difficult, they're work. We already all got full-time jobs. And this is going to be another full-time job. But for me, that's, it's, it's worth it. Yeah. So, but here, I like that. Ooh, you said so much, so much. Ooh. Yeah, that, that was real. I'm in love with the idea of being in love. Ooh. Ooh. Um, it is good that you're able to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wish people were more honest. <laughs> right. um, but you know, for me, I, I really have this very, I would say at the moment, very unmovable uh, conceptualization of what a relationship is. And that it, that is that it is a partnership. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm always looking for a person, um, currently looking, I'm single. Um, <laughs> always looking for a person. Four, who, six, nine. Three, three, three. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Um, but I'm gonna look for a person who's, who comes to that, who we can both come to the table with the idea of partnership. Doesn't mean all things gotta be in order or whatever per se, but I really like this idea of communicating together, working together, growing together, loving together, like all those different things. So it's hard because in our day and age, a lot of people are very like individualized, even within a relationship, right? It's kind of like my feelings and how I feel and what I want to do in a relationship and not so much encompassing or including that other person. And I'm, I don't want that. Um, I also recognize there's so many people who have been in relationships that um, ha- haven't really dealt with their, haven't really faced their relationships in their most naked nature. And what I mean by that is like I saw in the pandemic how people who started dating in the pandemic broke up in the pandemic, mm-hmm. right? So like you were to get, you started dating, coming out on Instagram in, in, in April or May, right? Just a couple and then by December, you're like, okay, that person's gone. And I think what it was, that last year was, and we still in pandemic, but particularly last year when we was like in the high, most heightened part of it, um, it started to see that people are just yearning for companionship yeah. and not necessarily a relationship, which is two different things. Mm. So I'm trying to work through myself personally, am I wanting to just have companionship? And do I need to just get a dog or a fish or, or become a plant dad? <laughs> or, am I, or am I actually ready for a relationship? And so, I, But I also want to get a house, I want to have kids, I want to, you know, travel the world i want to do things with my partner and that be our own thing and uh, and i'll say this last point for me relationships are also about friendship i reckon i try to escape this idea that we have to be friends first Absolutely. Um, and it's come back around giving me the ass over and over again related to like the reason why a lot of the other relationships that i have seen in my in my in my home my personal life 
that are flourishing, it's because they were friends first. So I really got to find guys who are willing to, like, let's start off as friends. And it doesn't mean, like, friends as in, like, I'm, like, put you in a friend zone. Friend is, right. friend, in the friend zone, but, like, let's really get to know each other. So they're, like, if we were to break up tomorrow, we can still hang out and go to brunch and, like, chop it up and whatever. Ooh. I don't know if I can hit that right what? away after I break up. Oh, yeah, no, not right away. Right. Not that. But in time. But, in time. but, but, time. but to, to, we said piggyback. Huh? Piggyback <laughs> what you said. Uh, I, I do feel... And I strongly feel this to your point. Yes, a relation, a successful relationship must start with a really good friendship. Mm-hmm. Because if not, then it's just it's so it's surface, and then kind of like what you were saying, like you didn't really get to know the person. Like mm-hmm. you just it's just it's surface. And to so, contextualize, picture all the things you want to do with your say your soulmate, and replace soulmate, partner, whatever that language say is, replace that with friend. So when you think about, I want to buy a house with my friend or my best friend, like, dang, that's a that, that's a hefty thing. You don't want to just, yeah. we all got close friends, but there's only a few friends who probably will actually go on a mortgage with, right? right? <laughs> I want to have children and raise up human beings yeah. with my friend. Like, you, when you put in that context, it helps to give light to the heavy nature of it, but also right. take away the idea that, like, there's still a level of intimacy that has to be yeah. Because kind of what you said earlier, Adrian, about um, yeah, there are gonna be moments where you'd be like, oh, I just don't, I can't stand you. Right, ass. like get out of my face. Right, but you always gonna if that friendship is there, you're gonna always have that connection, and it, that's never gonna be breakable. Right. right. And to your point, I think that uh, so my parents have been together for over twenty years. Oh. Um, yes. My parents are also in their early forties, um, so they've been together. At, since in high school. Um, mm-hmm. It's like the basis of my parents' relationship is that they're friends. Like, they talk, they kiki, just like they would, it's that they homies. Yeah. So I do feel like friendship uh, should be at the base of any relationship. And I think that the idea of fulfillment keeps mm-hmm. playing in my mm-hmm. mind, right? So relationships bring fulfillment to your life. Yeah. Um, you talked about joy, peace, happiness, love. These are things that we need, that humans need to create a sense of fulfillment, right? right? As it relates to me, um, I've never been in a relationship and I haven't because I'm still figuring out who I am. And I'm still trying to make sure that I'm doing what I can do to be the best person for me. That's because true. I can't be in a relationship and seek fulfillment if I can't be self-fulfilled. Mm. That or right? mm. So yes. I'm, I'm, I'm introspectively working on me. If I haven't learned how to fulfill myself and I'm trying to get to know somebody else, because at that point, say about the great Dr. Zach Shirley, <laughs> somebody else can be collateral damage within my own internal struggles because I'm still trying to figure out how to make myself internally happy. Well, ooh. And if I can't do it alone in solidarity, how can I expect or want you to do that for me mm. if I haven't figured it out for myself? Come on now. Right? So I think that a lot of people look to get into relationships because they want that other person to make them fulfilled because they haven't done enough groundwork to figure that out for themselves. So relationships, it's a duality, but it really starts with self. Come on, yeah, it starts with self. It starts with self. Yeah. It starts with self. Yeah. Have a relationship with yourself. Mm. And then once you figure out what that relationship looks like, once you figure out can can you date yourself, can you love yourself, can you take yourself out on a date? Can you be intimate with, with yourself? That all of that, right? All all of of that. Then and intimate with yourself does not mean masturbation, right? No, absolutely. not all right, right, right. 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 Um, Sometimes, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fighting you. <laughs> and, and, but and so there's another thing I say. So intimacy um, leads to peace. The feelings people have different feelings as it relates to relationships because people have varying experiences that pertains to relationships. We've, some of us have been in long-lasting relationships. Some of us have, haven't been in relationships. Some, some of us have been in multiple relationships. But what we're saying is that you have to figure out who you are mm-hmm. and what's going to be best for your relationship. Yep. And that doesn't start with the person you with. It internally starts with you. And I'm glad that you said folk, like, too, too many people, I think, 
um, are subject to bring other people into their relationship, meaning worried about what people are saying, mm, yeah. what they're doing, etc. Or, well, they're posting on this, or they're going here, so we need to be doing that. Right. And transparently, I was one of those types of people, and I had to work through that. Like, why am I trying to compare my relationship so like to what everybody are. else's yeah. relationship is, is like? Like we are. That, so that goes back to that piece about um, self. Yeah. So. If you think about it, so if, if I'm one of those people who I was comparing what I have to everybody else, or they in a, and I want that too, when I get to the point of me being in a relationship, I'm going to start doing the same thing. Yep. Because at the base, at that self, what I'm breaking into it, it's that comparison. So that's what it's going to lead to. One, because you're going, to, you're going in a relationship for the wrong reasons. Yeah, right. Yeah, for, to be validated yeah, by other people. Right. Exactly. Right. It's, it's like building a home. You can't expect to have a self-sufficient and self-sustaining home when your foundation is wrecked and weak, okay? You can have cracks in the cement as you're building your home and expect your home to stand the test of time. Come on, Chris. To go through Chrisanne, wind, storms, <laughs> rain, and hurricane. But when you figure out how to build your house the correct way, with a great foundation, mm. a foundation that's best befitting of you, your needs, your wants, is going to help you feel self-fulfilled, that house will be that forever. That's Chris. You, you better listen. You better speak to the people. Me. So you better speak to the people. Right. You better look at that camera too. Right. 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 Me, you could just add me. You could add me. You could add me. You could just let my DMs. And so, the thing about it now is, as we get ready to wrap up and close, um, we want to come in, come to you with some words of wisdom. Um, number one, I would tell you that you have to understand in relationships. I want to talk about the concept of ghosting real quick. Mm. <laughs> in relationships, we oftentimes experience that. My, my philosophy is you ghost it, stay dead. Ooh. Mm. 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 <laughs> Number two, you get to a point where, and I'm going to say this, and, and, and this, it, it might sound a little harsh. but It's I'm all sorry. right. We keep it real. Um, you know, when people hurt you, if they did that shit, they meant that shit. Mm. And you cannot let that be something that attaches itself to your soul because it's going to continue to play itself out and play itself over. Mm -hmm. What I had to learn to also heal from, and I, I was listening to you, Q, when you, when you were talking, um, you know, <laughs> when we talk about attachment, mm. when we talk about belonging. Mm. So I want, so Toni Morrison, Hmm. mentioned something about belonging. And, and I want to drop this as a word of wisdom. She said, the word belong, that's a bad word. Like, you can't belong to someone and someone can't belong to you. Mm -hmm. You look at the mountains and you see the clouds circle around the mountain. But if you look up far enough, she said, what do you see? You see the tip of the mountain poking out. The clouds don't consume the mountain. They embrace the mountain, but mm -hmm. they don't consume it. Ooh. And that's the same thing in a relationship. When you are with someone, do you, do, do, none of us want this person who falls apart every time we walk out the door. Right. Mm -hmm. And he don't want that either. Someone who can't survive without him. Because that means that you do not have, you've not done the work that Chris was talking about for yourself. So, mm -hmm. And so she said, and this is the part that struck me, and I think that many of us have been here. Black women, boy. Too. Black women, continue to say it today. Love black women. She said, you are turning over your whole life to him. Your whole life, girl. And if it means that little to you, to where you can just give it away to him like a toy on a shelf. Mm. It's not going to mean anything to him. That's so true. Wow. Just, you, you, you give him, you give I these people, said. this person, this access to you like a toy on the shelf. And they can pull it down when they want to play with it and they can put it back and forget it when they don't. Mm. And so a word of wisdom that I would say wow. to you all and to ourselves, because we have to be honest and do the work with ourselves, yep. is understand the fact that 
You can't own somebody else. Yeah. All you can do is own yourself. Mm. And with that, I will turn it over to Adrian so we can call it out. All right, y'all. So that is the end of our first episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope that you enjoyed the journey that we took you on. Please don't forget to follow us, like, and share on all of our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, where you'll be watching the show, YouTube. And please follow us. It's at the Blackberry View. We hope that you'll join in on the conversation by messaging us or emailing us your thoughts on monogamy versus polygamy. I said that wrong, y'all. Please forgive me. As well as our WTF moments and our wow moments. Until next time, peace, love, and hair grease. No shade, all juice. <laughs> 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 <laughs>